recording. Okay, so uh, let's just get into it. Um, so I'm going to open up my game project. And here's my game. So we created a uh, obstacle sort of moving character on Tuesday. And here's our sprite sheet for this little bug enemy character that has uh, idle, walk, attack, and death animations. And so we're going to look at how to set this up to interact with the rest of the scene and the character uh, and uh, construct our scene. So I'm going to open up Godot and click on my game and click Edit. And I'm going to go to my background scene. Since I have some stuff in here already, I'll add it into here. But you could put this in any scene you want to, and it should work uh, the same way. Um, so the obstacle has some different features, which you can turn on or off. Um, so you can make it uh, move back and forth. You can make it activate when the player gets near the obstacle. And you can also make it um, stay on a platform. So you might not need all these features for the design of your game or your level, uh, but I'll go over how to activate those features. Um, so before we start building the obstacle, you can see what the obstacle should look like inside the 270 assets folder. So if we go in there and go to scenes, go to components, this is the obstacle moving component. And if we look in here, we can see everything that we need to build. Um, so you could just use this and replace your artwork. But I'm going to go over how to build this from scratch so we can review some different uh, some various uh, things that we need to do in Godot to create components. So the obstacle is here. And there's also a reference to the script here. So the script for the obstacle moving is pretty long, so we're not going to um, rewrite that one. Uh, but we will attach it to our obstacle. And I'll show you guys uh, the various points where uh, the script needs to connect to the um, scene. Um, so you can see there's like a few signals in here. Uh, and then the script is attached to the main obstacle. So we're going to go over how to recreate that. And there's a couple of new topics that we'll talk about uh, using a, a raycaster and a couple of other things to make our obstacle work. So let's go back to our 2D view. And I'm going to create a new scene. So I'm going to click on the little plus button uh, to create a new scene. And the obstacle is going to be moving. So just like our player, we're going to use a kinematic body. So for our root node, I'm going to click Other Node. And I'm going to type in kinematic body. And I want to use the 2D version. So I'm going to select that and click Create. And then I'll double click on this. And I'm just going to give this a name. Uh, the generic name could be like moving obstacle or something like that. I made like a, a little um, bug. So I'm just going to call this a bug. And so now we can get started constructing our obstacle. Uh, so we're actually going to have a few different colliders for the obstacle because we're going to interact in a few different ways. So I'm going to start by adding the art, and then we'll add the colliders on top of that. Um, so I'm going to click the plus button and add an animated sprite. So there's our animated sprite. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and click on the animated sprite and then create some frames. So I'm going to go to, over to frames in the inspector and click on empty, click new sprite frames. And then I'm going to click on the sprite frames to open up my animation editor. Uh, so remember for our um, bug, we have uh, four animations that we need to add. So we have the idle animation. I'm going to rename the default animation idle. And we want to make sure that the names of the animation match our code. So let's go ahead and add the script here. And we can look at the 
names for the animation in the code. So I'm going to choose the main node. Our script is usually going to be added to the uh, main node or the root node at the top. And I'll go over to Inspector and find the script field at the bottom and click Empty and then Load. And so we'll find this script in the Assets folder. So I'm going to go to 270 Assets, go to Scripts, and then look for the Obstacle Moving script and click Open. Uh, and so now we have our script connected and we can see the script variables. And I can also click on the script to look through and look at the code a bit. So let's look through and see if we can find some animations. So here's our walk animation here. We also have a dies animation. We have an attack animation down here. And let's see, is that it? We should have an idle animation somewhere. Uh, let's see. I actually don't see the idle animation, so maybe we don't need an idle animation. Uh, we can check later and maybe update the script. Uh, anyway, let's go back to our 2D view. And I'm going to go ahead and save. This says unsaved. And I just noticed that. So I want to make sure to save my progress as I go. So my bug is a component. So I'm going to go into scenes and then go to components folder. And I can just save this as bug. So I have this like bug component now. And so let's, let's go back and make our animation. So we have idle. We have a uh, walk animation. We have a attack animation, and there's also a dies animation. So the names for these are kind of arbitrary. You could change these names, but they just have to match what's in the code. Um, so you'd have to update the code as well. So let's start with our idle animation. Uh, so I'm going to click on the waffle button to add frames from a sprite sheet, and go to my sprites folder and find my bug, and click Open. Small, so I'm going to increase the zoom. And we need to change the number of cells. So there's only three uh, horizontal cells and three vertical cells. And for the idle animation, uh, we're just going to choose these first two cells. Kind of hard to see up there on the projector, but um, hopefully you guys can see that. Add those two frames. And let's make sure that we don't see this right now because the idle animation is not set. So let's go over to the animation and set it to idle. And then let's turn playing on. So there's our idle animation. Uh, I'm going to make a couple copies of each of these frames just to space them out a little bit. So I'm going to copy, just hit the copy button here and then paste a few of those. And then I'll copy this one a couple times, maybe copy this one. So I'm just using a couple frames, but I can get this kind of uh, more um, interesting uh, variation on the idle animation here. Okay, so my bug is idle. Uh, so now let's go to the walk animation. And so we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to click on the waffle button. And the bug obstacle is already chosen, so I'm just going to click open. And I'm going to choose the next two frames here. Uh, so that's my walk frame. So when you add all of the animation frames into one sprite sheet, we just have to remember which is which. So this is the third frame and the fourth frame that make up my walk animation. And you can always edit this later. If you get this wrong, you can just delete the, the frames that you don't need here. So then let's switch my default to the walk animation. And we can see that looks pretty good. Um, I think this might not match the direction in the code, but we can test it later and then change it if we need to. So I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Um, but I can't remember if the default direction is supposed to be right or left. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like and, and fix it later. So uh, last two animations, the attack animation. Let's click on the waffle and click Open. And so I have two frames for my little attack animation. Let's take a look at that one. OK, that's pretty cool. 
Um, and I don't really want this one to loop because uh, we don't want the bug to continuously attack the character. We want it to attack once and then uh, sit back down. So I'm going to turn off the loop here. Um, so then we have one more animation, the dies animation. So we're going to choose the same sprite sheet again, and the dies animation is just these bottom three frames. So let's preview that. I'm going to change the animation to dies. And we can see that uh, looks pretty good. I might want to slow it down a little bit so we can watch the bug die. So I'll do two frames per second. So that slows it down a little bit. It's only three frames, so it's not going to take very long. But So now we get a better sense of what happens. And I'm also going to turn off loop for this one because we don't want to die more than once. And then I'm going to go here and set it back to idle. And we'll build the rest of our obstacle. So I've got our animations in place. And remember, when I'm making a component, I typically want the component to be centered in the middle of my scene. So in a regular scene, there's going to be lots of stuff. And it, it's not all going to be in the center. It's going to be moved around. But for each one of my components, like the apple, these we want to be centered. So when we move them, the art we know where the art is going to be. So the way that we make sure to do that is make sure our individual components are centered in the scene. OK, so there's our bug. Um, and so the first type of collider that our bug needs is something for it to run into like walls and stuff like that. So our bug, unlike our static uh, obstacle, the cactus, the bug is actually going to interact with the platforms and things in our scene like our player does. So we need to give the bug body a collider uh, to use to interact with the rest of the team. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to hit plus here and find uh, a collider Oops, or a collision shape, 2D. And uh, for this one, I want to uh, use a circle that matches the bug's body. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that the art overlaps a little bit with the scene around it. I'm going to turn off the snapping here um, so I don't have to worry about snapping to precise parts. So let's turn that off. So the bug body is, is quite smaller than the art, but I think that's OK. I'd rather have a little bit of overlap than the ground being like you know way down below the bug or something like that. And we can always come back and adjust this if we want to. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go to the bug. And we need to be careful about how we assign the various colliders. So if I click on the main kinematic body for the bug and click on collision, or actually, I have to go down to collision object. So we have our layers here. And last time, we created some labels for the layers. We have the obstacle body and the obstacle hit area. And so we have that, and then we also have the mask. And our bug is actually going to have a couple extra layers. So if you don't have those labels, or you want to change them, or you want to create more, we need to go to Project and go to Project Settings. And then it's somewhere down at the bottom, but I can just search Layers and then go to 2D Physics. We have our obstacle body. We have the hit area. This is where um, the obstacle will hit the player. Um, then we also want another layer for where the player can actually kill the bug. So we're going to call this obstacle. Um, hmm, what's a good name for this? Let's call this the obstacle. Uh, uh, what would we call this? Forget what I used to call this. Um, this is where the obstacle can be killed. So let's just call this the obstacle dies area. And then the last layer we need is the, the um, obstacle activate area. So this is an option, but we can create an area where the uh, that will activate once the player ends it. Um, and these labels don't actually change the functionality. So you can really call these whatever you want, as long as you know what they mean. But ultimately, what really matters is just which button is clicked. So I don't even have to actually use these labels if I can just remember some basic numbers. 
Uh, but it's nice to have the labels. So somebody else was collaborating with you, they could look at this and see what uh, the different layers are supposed to be. So uh, for our bug, we have to select the layer. So this is the obstacle body. And we want to turn off the player layer because it's not on the player layer. And then for the mask, we don't want the body of the bug to interact with the player. Uh, we want it to interact with the platforms. So I'm going to turn off player and turn on platforms. You might also want obstacle bodies to interact with each other. For example, if you want the bugs to run into the cactuses. But if you don't want that to happen, then you can ignore this. So I'm going to ignore this for now. The bugs will be able to walk past the cactuses. But we can come back and change that later if we want to. So I'm going to make two more uh, collision areas for my bug. And I'll show you guys what those are going to look like for a second. Um, so we have this is area is the body. This is what's going to keep the bug on the platform. So here's our platform. If the body hits the platform, it'll stop. And that'll keep our bug on the platform. Now I'm going to make another area for the player uh, to kill the bug. So I might put it like up here somewhere. I don't want these areas to overlap. It's not the end of the world if they do. Uh, but for the most part, I want to keep them separate. So this will be the area where the player can jump and uh, kill or uh, attack the bug. Um, and then we also want an area where the bug can attack the player. So you can choose how you want that to look. You might want the bug to only attack the player when it's like looking at the player. So you might want that area to be over here. If you want the bug to be able to hurt the player from any direction, you could make an area like this. So if the player, you know, comes here, then it'll attack the player. And then the last area that we want to make uh, is the detect area. So that's going to be a much larger area. And again, this is just an option. If the player is outside of this area, the bug will not notice the player. If the player enters this area, then the bug will start moving. So those are the few options that we have. And we can always adjust the code to add other options if we want to in the future. So let's start with the death area. So I'm going to click on the bug and click the plus and add a new area 2D. So this is just an area. It's not going to collide with the player. It'll just show, it'll just uh, give us an event if the player enters this area. So an area needs a collision shape. Let's call this the dies area. And let's make sure that the layer is the obstacle dies area. And we'll turn off the player area. And this one, we do want to interact with the player. So I'm going to leave the mask on player. So now this area that we're making will only interact with the player. So then I need to add a new collision shape. So I'm going to add a collision shape 2D. And I'm going to make this one like a little rectangle. And then I'm going to make it kind of small and move it up here and make it even a little bit smaller and put it like right there. So depending on how accurate you want your gameplay to be, you might want to play around with the position and size of the shape. If it's smaller, it'll be harder for the player to kill the bug. If it's larger, it'll be easier for the player to kill the bug. Um, you might also want to put it back here or in front if you want like a specific zone uh, for the player to kill the bug. Um, but depending on what your art looks like and what the goal of your obstacle is, you might want to make some adjustments to that. So that's our dies area. And we're going to eventually connect all of these to our uh, bug script. But let's finish building them first. So the next one is our attack area. Since I already made this area, I'm just going to duplicate it so I don't have to recreate these nodes. So I'm going to click the dies area and just hit control D. Oops. Do duplicate. And I'm going to name this attack area. And now I'll move the attack area over here. And again, you can. Oh, whoops. Huh. It looks like it's. These are connected. OK, maybe I can't duplicate this. 
That's kind of weird. I feel like I've done this before, but whatever. Let's just start over. So I'll just delete this and create it from scratch. So I'll select the bug, uh, make a new area 2D, call this the attack area. Then I have to add a collision shape. And I'm going to choose a rectangle. And again, you could put it on both sides of the bug or one side of the bug. It's up to you. I'm going to put it on both sides of the bug. I'm going to make it like this bug is you know, really dangerous. But I don't want to go past the art because then the attack will occur before the player actually is visual, visually interacting with the bug. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than the art so that the player will at least be pretty close to the bug when the attack occurs. And I don't want to overlap with the death area too much, uh, because then both of those things could happen at the same time. OK, so I've got my attack area. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit and make my detect area. So I'm going to click the plus button again, make another area 2D. Oops. I want to select the main node first. So it's on the main node, not the other node. OK, so this is the detect, or I think I called this activate area. It doesn't really matter what you call it um, in this case, just so we know what it is. Uh, and so then we're going to add a collision shape here. And I'm going to make this one a rectangle. You can make this a circle, too, if you want like you know, the bug to detect the player like up here or down here. Wherever it is, whenever the player enters this area, the bug will detect the player. You could also make it like in front of the bug or behind the bug, however you want it to work. I'm just going to put it kind of in the middle right here. OK, so we've got all our areas. Let's make sure we have our collisions set up correctly. So I already did the layer for the dies area. The attack area, let's just go to collision, choose um, obstacle hit area. Uh, turn off player for the layer, and then the mask should stay one since it's going to interact with the player. Same thing with the activate area. We're going to change this one to activate, turn the player layer off, and then leave the player layer on the mask so they're inter they interact with each other. And so now we're almost done. Now we have to match all of our signals to our code. And one thing that's a little bit tricky here is that the functions that create it are created by our signals may not match the code because we're using a script that's pre-written. So let's actually go look at our scripts and see what those functions are called. We may want to rename them. Um, so on hit body entered, this is if we hit the player. So, or no, this is if the player hits us. So actually, this should be the dies. Um, so I should have named this dot hit, but uh, that's OK. We can rename that. So then attack makes sense, but it doesn't have area on it. And then detect. So I should have looked at this code first to match these up. It doesn't really matter. You can always change these, but it's a little bit easier if these match. So let's go ahead and match these. So this one should actually be hit. Uh, this one should be just plain attack, and this one should be detect. So that'll make it a little bit easier to connect these nodes, but again, it doesn't have to uh, do that. You can change the receiver method, or you can update the receiver method. Uh, but now we're ready to connect our signals, so I'm going to click on the hit area, go over to node, and we just want when a body is entered, which will be the player. So I'm going to double click on body entered, connect it to bug, and click connect. And we can see now the receiver method is on hit body entered, which is what we want. We just want that to match. Uh, if it doesn't match, we can always change it. But you know if it worked, if this green arrow appears next to the correct function. If it's not the right function, if it creates a new function, then we need to change it. Um, so I'll show you guys actually what that would look like in case you make a mistake. So let's say I 
had this called attack area and I added another uh, event. So I'm gonna click on the area, go to the node tab and double click body entered. Now look, it says on attack area body entered. If I click connect, what happens is it actually connects to a new function that didn't exist before. So that's not the end of the world. I could rename these functions if I wanted to, but what we can do is just delete this. So if you see that, if you see like a new function and it says pass, that means we didn't connect it to the right thing. So let's delete this. And so I can actually just copy this function name. So I'm just gonna double click on this function and, and click copy, and then go back to my uh, node. I'll remove the signal that was wrong. So I'll just click on it and click disconnect. And then I'll double click body entered again. And even though I haven't changed the name of the node, I can change the receiver method. So I'm gonna paste the right receiver method in here and then click connect. And now you can see the green signal connects to the right function. So if you have any trouble with that, let me know. We can uh, go over how to get it uh, right. Uh, but that's just something to look out for. Okay, so one more, we have our detect. And so I think this is named correctly, so it should line up nicely. I'm gonna double click body entered, click connect. And there we go, so that connects to our obstacle. We have one more uh, signal co to connect. You can see there's an on animated sprite animation finished. This is when we kill the uh, bug or uh, if the bug is attacking. When that animation finishes, we want to uh, reset. So I'm gonna click on animated sprites and then go to my node uh, tab and double click animation finished, connect to the bug. And we can see that green signal connected directly where I want in my code. So that all looks good. There's one more bit that we have to add and then we'll be ready to put this into our scene. So our bug has to have a special thing to help it stay on the platform. And we have to name this correctly. So if we look inside um, our movement update, there's this thing called the platform check to check if we're on the platform. So we just have to remember that name and we're gonna add what's called a raycast. So I'm gonna go back to 2D view, scroll in a little bit. I'm gonna lock down all of my parts. So I'm just gonna click the lock and the deselect button on all of my parts. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it a little easier to edit. And now I'm gonna add a little ray out of the middle of the bug. So I'm gonna click the plus button and type in raycast and I want a raycast 2D. So a raycast is just like a little arrow and it just tells us if we're running into any other objects in the scene. And so our raycast will tell us if we are interacting with a platform or not. And if we're not interacting with a platform, what we'll do is we'll turn around. So here's my raycast. I need to make sure to rename this platform check or else it won't match the code. So I'll save that. And then for the collision mask, it doesn't have its own layer because it's just telling us whether we're colliding with something or not. So we just want to change this to what we're colliding with. So what we're colliding with in this case is our platforms. We can turn the platforms on, turn players off, and that should be everything we need to do. And it's a little bit longer than it needs to be. So it probably won't make a huge difference, but it will affect the performance a little bit. So we could probably make this like 25 and it'll probably work just as well. And then we also wanna move the platform check a little bit forward because uh, it's gonna move back and forth to detect if we're about to fall off of a platform. Um, and I think it should actually be going the other direction, but I'm just gonna, put it over there and then we'll test it. Okay, so that's a lot of steps, um, but that's how you build a moving obstacle. And if you get lost at any point, just remember that you could go into the 270 assets, go into scenes, components, and open up the moving obstacle here. And just take a look and make sure you got everything in here. There are a couple sounds in here that we haven't gone over yet, so we're gonna ignore that for now. Um, but everything else, looks the same.
So there's our bug. We're ready to put it into our scene. Um, so let's go back to our background scene. And so we're going to put a few bugs in here and try some of the different uh, parameters. So I'm going to add in a default node 2D. Oh, whoops, I don't want this to be inside apples. I want this to be down here. So I'm going to call this bugs. And then to link a scene, I'm going to use the link button. And I'm going to type in bug. And there's my scenes slash component slash bug. So I'm going to click open. And there's my bug. I don't know why it's over here, but there we go. So let's add a couple bugs into the scene. I'll put one over here. And then I'm going to rename this bug one. And I'm going to duplicate it a few times. So let's take bug two and put him over here next to the cactus. And then we'll put bug three over on this platform over here. And we'll put the last bug on a platform right here. OK. So let's set some different parameters for each one of our bugs. So I'm going to click on the first bug. If I want to zoom in, I can hit F, and it'll go to where my bug is. So there's bug one. So in the script variables, we can change a few different parts for each bug. So we can change whether or not it's moving, whether, what the speed is, whether or not we want it to stay on the platform, what the initial direction is, so negative one will be left and one will be right. Um, so I think I got the direction wrong, but uh, we can switch it if we need to. And then this uh, option down here is off by default, the activate on player. So I'm gonna turn activate on player on for this bug over here. And same thing for this bug over here. And let's go over to this bug. And let's increase the speed, so we'll make this bug a little harder to get past. And then let's go over to this bug. And let's change the direction. So we'll make the direction 1. And I'm going to leave them all at stay on platform. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but if I turn stay on platform off, they're just going to fall off the platform, which is not really what I want. If I was in a scene without gravity, then that would make more sense. But for now, I'm going to uh, leave that on. So let's run our scene and see what it looks like. Uh-oh. OK, we got a, an error. Invalid in-depth shape. Oh, so yeah, this is something actually I forgot. We need to make sure that we have a reference to our collider shape. I'm going to go back to our bug. And this collision shape that we added for the main bug, that has to be named collider. I should have just left this as collision shape, but whatever. Let's call this collider. Um, and try it again. OK, now we have another error. OK, so we're interacting with the tile map when a body enters the uh, the bug. So we must have our layers off. So this is the attack area. OK, so we have obstacle hit area. I think that's right. And the mask is just the player. So I probably have an issue with my tiles. Take a look at my tiles. So this tile is on the right layer. And it has the right mask. I bet I didn't update this tile. So let's see, this tile map, collision. Yes, yeah, so I added this tile last time as an example, but I didn't change the layer. So that's why I got an error, because the tile is on the player layer, but it should be on the platform layer. So that should fix that. OK, let's run it again. OK, so now we're running. And it looks like my bugs are glitching out. So let's see. Can I kill the bug? Oh, shoot. OK, sorry. I have all these errors. So there's no sounds here. So let's comment out the sounds real quick. And try it again. OK, so 
Our bug is still glitching out, but we can kill the bug, so that's cool. This bug is freaking out. Okay, so we can kill the bug. Let's see if we can get hit by the bug. I can get hit by the cactus, but let's see if I can get hit by the bug. So that I can get hit by the bug. So the only thing I'm missing is that the bug is getting turned around too many times. So that tells me that there's probably something wrong with my platform check. Um, so let's see. Uh, I think I did everything right here. It's colliding with platforms. Let's look at my code for a second. So what's happening in the code, we want to stay on the platform. We're colliding, then we change the direction. So it's always changing direction. Um, let's look at our default for a second. So here's the platform check. Collision mask is two. It says to collide with areas, but I don't think that makes a difference. But we can change that and see if that works. And then let's see this. Looks right. Okay, so let's try changing that. So collide with areas on. Okay, we're still getting these glitches. Okay. Um, I must just be missing a step. Uh, I'll see if I can figure it out, but um, we can move on if it's uh, okay. So if stay on platform, if is on wall or not is colliding. Direction switch. Um, okay, let's see. And the tile map is on layer two. Tile map is on layer two. We may want to also set the tile map to interact with the um, obstacle body. I don't know if that matters. OK. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is. Let's try turning stay on platform off and see if the bug moves. Okay, so the bug does move. See if it turns around. Oh, it's not interacting with the canvases, so it's just going to walk off the side of this thing. Okay. Um. Let's look at our obstacle moving again. Oh, its collider is right in the middle. Oh, I guess the code moves the platform check. So let me put this right in the middle. Is there anything else I'm missing? Platform check enabled on, food parent on, has to. Oh, is it just that I didn't click enabled on? Oh, that is so annoying. OK, enabled is on. Now it should work. Okay, there we go. So here's our bug. It moves when I get close to it. It's very hard to see. So I'm actually going to change the color of the bug because it's too dark. It doesn't work well with the background. So I'm going to go to the animated sprite, go to visibility, and just see if I can get it. It's kind of dark, so it's going to be hard to get it to be easier to see. I might have to change the original art. Okay, let's see. Yeah, because it's too dark. Okay, so let's change the art real quick. This will be a good thing to demonstrate. So I'm going to go to Pascal and go to the app. And I'm going to import, go to Browse Pascal files, get my obstacle bug, 
click open. And I'm just going to do a color replace. So I'm going to get the paint all pixels. I'm going to get a brighter version of this color. Maybe I'll make it like kind of orangey. Something like that. And then I'm going to hit control to apply to all layers or shift to apply to shift to apply to all frames. There you go. Save that. And let's export. I'm going to click download. And I'm just going to, it's already in my sprites folder, so I'm just going to click save here. But actually, I need to do it again because I need to make sure that it's the right name. So I'm going to click on the original bug art and then click save so it replaces it. So I've replaced that art. Let's go back to Godot. There we can see the art updates. Now it'll, we'll be able to see it better. Run it again. OK, so see, these bugs don't move because they have the detect turned on. So when I get too close, he starts coming after me. And if I jump on him, he should die. OK, this guy is moving fast because his speed is greater. And let's see if I can kill him. Oh, uh, he got me. OK, I might have to change the direction of the attack animation. OK, this guy is set to detect. OK, let's see what it looks like when he attacks me. Oh, that actually was fine. Oh, but he just goes in the direction. Uh, so I'd have to write some code to make it work if he's attacking me backwards, but I don't want to do that right now. Um, but this looks good enough. So let's get this guy. OK. So those are our moving obstacles. Um, so there's a, a few more steps to get that to work. And we have to be careful with a bunch of the different settings. This really annoying uh, enabled setting that I forgot about for our Raycast. But now that's all working. Um, so yeah. So let's do a little documentation. And then we'll post this on the Open Lab. And then we'll be done for this demo. So I'm going to make a video for this one again. Um, since I want to show everything that's going on in the scene. And remember, I'm going to go over to the Open Lab. So I'm on Windows. I'm going to use the Xbox Game Bar to make this video. But remember, on the Open Lab, if you go to Links and go to Documentation, there's a bunch of videos here about how to create documentation on Windows or Mac. So you can look at those if you're not sure how to do it. So I'm going to run my game. And then I'm going to hit uh, Windows G to open up the game bar. And I'm going to start a video. So I'm going to use this uh, circle button. So I'm going to start recording. I don't care about audio because I don't have any audio yet. Then I'm going to go back to my game window. And so I want to show this bug chasing me. And then what happens when the bug attacks me? And then what happens when I kill the bug? OK, and let's look at this bug over here. OK, got him. Uh-oh, then I died. But we saw the bugs. That's good enough. So let's stop there and close the game. And then we'll upload our documentation. So I'm going to close this, go back to the Open Lab, and click on the plus to add a new post. And let's choose some categories to get started. So we're going to categories. And for this one, anything with the obstacle. So we made obstacles, obstacles and collisions. And so let's add our documentation. So I'm going to click the plus and add a video. Go to upload, find my videos, find my captures. There's that video. There's still like a weird thing going on where there's like this extra space in the video. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I'll work on that later. So now I want to add in my sprite sheet. So um, for my uh, moving obstacle, I added a bug. And then I want to add the sprite sheet. So I'm going to go to image, click upload. Now I'm going to go to my desktop, go to my project folder, go into the game folder, go to sprites. Here's my uh, bug sprite sheet. Click open. And 
uh, there we go. I'll put a note in here. Uh, all the sprite sheet has the idle, walk, attack, and dies animation. So let's take a look at that, see if it looks okay. So there's the video. I don't know what the deal with this like black space is. I need to figure that out later. But there's my bug coming after me and attacking me. And I kill the bug, I get the other apple. There's another bug that's faster. And then I died. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click Publish here, and I'm done. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording. Uh...